Hi buddy, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor and today we're going to be doing a guide for Kale support. So special thanks to Alice for a generous donation to support this guide. Uh, if you would like to support a guide of your own, I'll tell you how a little bit more at the end of the video. I do have a few queued up right now as of 719, but I'm going to get through all of these over the next couple of days. So there's going to be a lot of guides coming out. Um, I've got a decent little backlog that people have uh, submitted. But if you want to see a guide, um, you can check out some more guides here to see what they look like. You can check out some coaching videos if you want to see what uh, coaching looks like on the channel. And if you want to know more about how to uh, commission a guide or commission coaching, it's just $20 for a coaching session or $20 uh, for a guide. Limited time. The guides are going to have to be more because they take a very long time to do. Most people donate more for the guides, um, but I am willing to do it right now for a minimum of 20 if people are interested. Also, you can find a copy of this Google Doc in the description as well as timestamps. So if this ends up being a rather long video and you don't have time to watch the whole thing, you can always just go down into the description um, to jump around, find your favorite parts. Uh, and also you can just kind of skim down the guide, see what looks interesting and then jump to parts that way as well. Um, and at the end of the video, I will also show you uh, just some more stuff that the channel has to offer. If this is the first video that you've seen on the channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in here. So what's up with Kale? Why would you pick Kale support? All right, so she can be very powerful with hyper carries because uh, she itemizes very well into Ardent Sensor and into Zeke's uh, Convergence, which are both hyper carry oriented items. Uh, and she also, of course, has her ultimate to protect a carry and she can heal them and also let them reposition with a lot of speed. And she can slow people down so they can't get away as well as shred a lot of their armor and magic resist. So she's really designed to be a complement to a super high damage champion. Coincidentally, she can be that high damage champion uh, if you build the items on her the correct way. She has historically been a very, very powerful hyper carry, but she's just not played very much in a lot of metas. And frankly, I'm not really sure why you don't see more of her top lane. Um, I don't play her top lane, but I assume she probably has some bad matchups probably early in the game. Um, but if she gets to that point where she gets three or four items, she can be pretty close to unstoppable late game. That's an option you can do as support, although it will take you much longer because you're not going to get as much gold. However, with the new coin, you're going to get a ton of gold, so that just might help. There are games on other supports where I've gone Eye of the Oasis early on in the game, and I've ended up with almost as much gold as a mid or a top laner. That's just how much gold that item gives now. That's why I recommend it on virtually every support. Um... So that might actually help you build some of these more expensive items if you want those uh, as a support. So um, her R, one of the best defensive abilities, just discussed that. Uh, she has great wave clear early on. This is another thing that's undervalued a lot of times as support in the bot lane is having wave clear, being able to push into the tower. That makes the enemy AD carry um, miss last hits. It does coincidental damage to the tower and it helps your AD carry secure those last hits because they don't have to last hit under tower. You just have to be careful not to get ganked if you're doing that. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So great wave clear. Um, she has some of the best items. She can build almost anything. She can get a full Knight's Vow if you want that, which is popular. Ardent Sensor's good on her. Um, Athene's Unholy Grail is phenomenal on her. And then just your standard Redemption's really good on her. Um, you can go lock it if you want. You can get just about anything on her. You can even build damage items on her. So she's one of the most flexible supports you can possibly get, um, depending on what your team needs. So that's really nice. Um, and she does have that high scaling damage uh, option that I mentioned before. So a common meta position, if you're thinking about like when should you pick Kale other than you just love to play her, um, I think the best situation is if your team needs a little bit of extra damage, like maybe you have a bunch of low damage channel, you got like a Nunu, um, maybe a top lane Scion, something like that. Your team just needs a little bit of extra damage and you have a hyper carry that you want to protect on your team. So you have a Twitch, a Jinx, a Draven, a Master Yi, uh, something like that. That's probably the best thing is if you need a bit more damage and you want to protect a hyper carry, it should be a pretty good pick. Okay, so I've got a link here for her Wikia. Let's go ahead and go through her abilities really quickly. Um, all right, so her basic uh, passive is basic attacks and reckoning reduce armor and magic resist of champions by 3% for 5 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. So this means you can get up to 15% armor and magic resistance shred, which is quite powerful. Um... You know, even on squishy targets, you know, knocking off if someone only has like 
50 armor or something, knocking off seven and a half of that 15% is quite a lot. It's quite a lot. I mean, that, that basically means it doesn't exactly mathematically work out this way precisely, but it's pretty close to um, dealing 15% more damage to them um, for your AD carry or your um, AP carry. So uh, it's it's quite powerful. And you notice that it says your basic attacks. All right, this is not an on hit. We'll talk about that when we talk about her E. Her E is very confusing for a lot of people that don't uh, analyze it very carefully. Um, because the wording is very strange on it, and the difference between on attack and on hit is significant here, and it's something that just, the game doesn't explain very well. And there are some other champions with stuff like that that I've talked about in previous videos, my itemization videos. Um, but we'll get to it when we get down there. But it's it's important to note for now that it's on attack. So basically what this means is your E, when you turn it on, it does shred everyone around. Okay, it, it applies the negative, up to negative 15% to everybody, which is very good in deep fights. Okay, her Q, uh, only 650 range, so not very far for a harassment tool. It's much better as an all-in tool. Also, early on, 70 mana is quite a bit for supports, so this is not something you're just going to want to run up and just spam on people. It also doesn't do a ton of damage early on in the game. It only does 60. It does scale very, very well, however, if you look at this. So it goes starts at 60 for 70 mana, which is not even 1 to 1. Uh, but then it goes up to 260, and it has 100% bonus AD and 60% AP. So on hybrid items like Hextech Gunblade or Nasher's Tooth or Gensu's Rageblade, this gets huge. It can do just a massive amount of damage. So if you have like 200 extra AD and 200 extra AP, you know, it would do, what, 200, 320 extra damage. On top of that, it's 580 damage. That's quite a lot if you have 200, 200 in the mid to late game. That's that's pretty big. Eight second cooldown, so it's a decently long cooldown. Um, but you know, forty percent CDR, you can get that down to about four and a half seconds. That's not too bad. And it applies the slow for three seconds. Notice this is not a diminishing slow. A lot of slows on um, newer champions. This Kale is one of the original champions, so a lot of slows on newer champions. Uh, I forgot what they call it, but it falls off over time, diminishes over time. Right, so it'll say three seconds diminishing or whatever this is a full three seconds they are slowed for you know up to 55 percent. so that is really really big three seconds is a long time in league of legends so that's they're, they're not getting away when you put that reckoning on them uh when you level it up so it's very powerful however you know as a support i recommend probably maxing that last you can max it second you should unequivocally max E. We'll talk about why here in a second. But it depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're going for the damage build, you would probably want to max the second. If you're going for a more utility build, you'll probably want a higher heal, a better heal. So you'd probably max your heal second. Let's go ahead and talk about the heal real quick. Okay, so with the Divine Blessing, notice first this has a very long range. Janna's shield is 800, and that's pretty long. This is 900. Olulu's shield is 650. A Soraka heal is like 450. So this is almost twice the range of a Soraka heal. You can heal this from, you know, halfway across the screen. It's a really long range for a heal. So that's that's a very nice perk. Um, its base heal is quite a lot. I mean, a 240 base is really high. Uh, I think that's Soraka level healing there. However, you'll notice it does have a 15 second cooldown. So it cannot be cast nearly as much as a Soraka heal. And Soraka... Um, cooldown gets down to like two seconds or something but she doesn't hurt herself to do it and you give your ally movement speed for three seconds no diminishing so you speed up an ally for up to 30 percent plus seven percent per 100 ap so if you have 200 ap you know you really boost them up for 44 percent which is just astronomically high i mean it's like 150 movement speed or something it's insane so yeah i mean they're gonna have over like 500 move speed easily when you put this on them so this slows down enemies so that you can keep attacking them but this also speeds up an ally so your ally can keep attacking them this also helps with kiting so if you know an olaf is running at your ad carry you can turn this on and they just might be able to outrun him now if he has ghost on it's gonna be tough but you can at least kite a little bit away from things or if there's a kha'zix in your face and he's already used his jump you might be able to get away or a rengar you might be able to get away if you ult somebody and then put divine blessing on him to help them reposition so very versatile i mean three seconds for 30 percent is is quite a lot 
Um, whereas you think of like a Nami speed up is, I think it's only 40 move speed, if I remember correctly, and it only lasts for like a second and a half, maybe? This is like double the length of time, and way, way, way faster. Like I said, I mean, even at 30%, even if you have no AP, you know, that's still going to be like 90 to 100 move speed, probably about 100 move speed. So that's that's huge for three seconds. Now, obviously you have to cast this on Nami's as on any spell that she hits people with, um, but you can kind of just try to compare to other champions. Um, so 30% move speed is a lot. I think that Sona's move speed aura is only... I think that lasts for a couple of seconds, and it's like up to 15%, I think. So what you need to know here is 30% is a lot. This is about the same speed as Lulu's uh, Whimsy. I believe Lulu's Whimsy is 30% on your AD carry when you give him the attack speed and the move speed. So it's it's in the ballpark of Lulu's Whimsy, but instead of granting uh, attack speed, it grants a heal. A pretty, pretty big heal. Now the scaling on the heal is kind of low. It's only 45% AP, which is kind of sad. Um, but it's, it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. 15 second cooldown, not great, but once again, you get 40% CDR, you knock that down to 8 seconds, uh, probably, so it's okay. Fairly expensive, um, but the mana coin, which we'll talk about here in a second, helps a lot with Kale support, because her spells are kind of expensive early on, except for her E. Everything else is kind of expensive. Okay, so if you're going the utility build, we'll talk about all these different builds here in a second. I'm just kind of introducing you to the basic abilities and just what you need to know about them. So if you're going the utility build, this is what you'll max second. Okay. Um, so this is what I recommend. Uh, okay, I need to put this down here. Have to put that in there. Always max E first. I typoed that. Uh, max W second for the utility build. Max second for the damage option. Okay, we'll get some parallelism there. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's talk about her E. So this is kind of Kale's signature move, all right? So this is where she turns on her flaming sword and she gets 600 attack range. Um, so her basic attacks deal bonus magic damage. This is even her melee attacks. She gets that. Whenever she turns on her sword for 10 seconds, she gains 525 range. Um, oh, it's actually 650 range. Okay. So it's more than I thought. So it's 650 range. That's like Caitlyn range. Um... She gets 650 range, deals bonus magic damage, applying spell effects, her passive, and causing her basic attacks against non turrets to deal magic damage to all enemies near the main target for the duration. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that that does stack Reckoning, her basic attacks. But you'll notice that no word in here says on hit. There's no word in this area that says on hit. And that's really important to notice that. Alright, so it applies spell effects. It does not apply on hit effects from other abilities. Okay, because its attacks do this. It does not say that it interacts with on hit abilities whatsoever anywhere in here. So it does apply her passive because that's on hit. Or that's not on hit, that's on attack. Basic attacks on attack. So what what does this mean? Okay. So it's a very powerful AoE. You can shred a bunch of armor and magic resist off of people. It does pretty good damage. Once again, it scales with AP and with AD. Um, so it's 40% of your total AD is the secondary damage. So if you have 200 total AD, this is going to do 80 attack. So it'd be, let's say you have 200, 200 AP, AD. It'd be 60 plus 80 is 140. It's 200 attack. Okay, so that means your attacks are going to do uh, 200 extra damage. If you have 200, 200. And I believe that hits everybody around within that radius. So that's what makes her really strong as a hyper carry. Once you get some items, you're doing 200 extra damage to everybody that gets hit. That's in addition to your normal damage. So if you have 200 attack damage, 
um, and you're halfway through, let's say you've got 70 base damage, 200 attack damage, that's 270, plus the 200 off of this, that's 470 damage to your main target, and then all the second ones are taking the 200 damage. So it adds up quickly, quickly. If you get 200, 200 with Kale, you're going to be hitting like a truck in team fights, and that's why. The scaling on this, the hybrid scaling is really strong, and the hybrid scaling on this, the burst damage on our Q is really high. Okay, so that's where the super KO comes into effect. Okay, so you should always max it first because it's your damage in team fights, it AoE shreds people, and um, it helps you wave clear a lot faster. So you always max this first. Now, it lasts for 10 seconds too, which is a long time, which conveniently, if you have 40% CDR, so you take your 15 second cooldown, 40% CDR is gonna take you down to nine seconds. Um, so that's pretty good. Now, what about, let me see. Even at 30% CDR, you're only gonna have a half second downtime and 30% is gonna be pretty easy to get to with the itemization we'll talk about here in a second. Um, yeah, even at 30%, you're getting almost 100% uptime. So CDR is very, very important on her because then you can always keep this up. It costs virtually no mana. Um, so you're just always going to have this up. And that turns you into a pretty powerful um, AP AD hybrid caster, which is nice. Okay. But it's important to note that on hit does not interact with her. That does not AoE. So Nasher's Tooth on hit, the Rage Blade on hit, none of this naturally works. It does not hit everyone in the area or that extra damage, okay? Because that stuff is on hit, if we look at it. Um, so let me just look up. This is a common misconception about on hit from people. So it does on hit magic damage. I could be wrong about this, but I'm about 90% sure, 90, 95% sure that um, it does not grant that because it does not say on hit anywhere. Uh, that keyword is crucial to look for when you're looking for these cute little interactions with these items. It does not say that anywhere. Gain attack, doubling righteous furies, bonus magic damage, applying on spell effects. You'll notice the secondary damage. Okay, second. This may not attack your primary target for that extra amount of damage. It might. I think that only attacks your secondary target. So your primary target would not take all this extra damage. It's only your secondary target. Now it would take this. It would take the point three. So it would take the sixty, the point three, but then this extra AD ratio would only apply to the secondary targets, not your primary target, I believe, because your primary target doesn't take the full hit it takes this partial hit okay that makes more sense um so it deals magic damage to all enemies for the duration applying spell effects now this is the confusing part because it says it applies spell effects but it does not say it applies on hit effects and i don't believe that nasher's tooth counts as a spell effect it is an on hit effect so it will hit your main target with this, but it will not hit your secondary targets with this, which is what a lot of people think. Oh my God. You know, and that's what I would think too with some of this, just reading it at first glance. It does not. Now this is still a very good item on Kale. This is like the Kale item that you get because even hitting your primary target, um, you know, it's a 4,000 gold item. You look at it, it only costs 3,000 gold total, but even with the ability power, the attack speed, and the 20% cooldown, just never mind the passive, it's already gold efficient, right? So whatever this number is, that's um, that's basically 3,000 right there, just the ability power and attack speed. You get the 20% cooldown reduction for free. And then the on hit, um, it's difficult to calculate, but okay, here you go. For every 100 AP, you get an additional 15 on hit. It's 375 gold. So yeah, I mean, it's 140% gold efficient, even without its passive. Basically. So super, super efficient item. Like, if you can ever build this on a champion that for some reason needs attack speed and ability power, it's very, very powerful. And th that's why this is the most common damage item you'll see on Kale. Um, but this does not apply to multiple targets. Unless, unless you build Hurricane. 
Okay, now this is another, if you want to do the on-hit build, you can build Hurricane and get around this, all right? So Hurricane specifically reads, when basic attacking, bolts are fired up to two enemies near the target, each dealing 40% AD physical damage. Bolts can critically strike and apply on-hit effects. That's the crucial wording there. Okay, so this can apply on-hit effects. All right, and it's pretty efficient too. It's only 2,600 gold. Um, so if you get Hurricanes plus, Nas plus Nasher's Tooth, then you get this extra damage on hit. You get the extra, you know, 15 plus 100 on hit damage. Now, Hurricane does not have any AD on it though, and it does not have any AP. And remember that Kale's AP and AD ratios are huge. She wants both of those a lot. Because they scale really well with her E and they scale really well with her Q. However, since she likes on hit items anyways, like Gensu's Rage Blade and Nasher's Tooth, then if you're already getting those two items, Hurricane might make sense. It does give her attack speed, it does give her critical strike. Now, that extra magic damage, I don't believe critically strikes. I don't think it can critically strike. If we look at this here, it's secondary magic damage. Um. It's magic. It is not physical damage. Okay, it has a physical damage ratio, but it is not physical damage. So Kale is a very technical, confusing, like, this is such a confusing ability for a lot of people. So it does not deal physical damage, so it cannot critical strike. Although it scales off of your AD, it's still magic damage, okay? So that means that Black Cleaver also does not apply to this. So Black Cleaver, everyone would not get shredded because of Black Cleaver unless you have Runin's Hurricane. Um, because that will deal physical damage. So your basic attacks will deal physical damage to other people there. Okay, so if you go Cleaver for some reason, which I don't recommend on Kale, plus Runin's Hurricane, then you can AoE shred their armor by whatever the maximum is on Cleaver these days. I think it's 25%, plus Kale's normal 15%. I don't think it's additive. I think that it's that's multiplicative scaling when you have multiple shredding. Just look at my itemization video. I'll, I'll describe that. So it's not 40% shredded. It, I don't think. It'll be something else in there shredded. I can't do the math off the top of my head, but it's something else. It's not 40% shredded if you do that. Just don't build Black Cleaver on Kale. Trust me. Just don't do it. Um, but the thing, Runin's Hurricane does not apply Kale's passive to all the bolts. So let's say that you have... Um, Let's say that you turn on Kale's E with the Runin's Hurricane. You attack. All right. Your primary target that gets hit is going to do splash damage from uh, Kale with her E. That's going to do splash damage. That splash damage does apply Kale's passive. So that there's three people clumped up. You throw one auto attack. It's going to do one round of shred to everybody. Okay. Just one shred. So that's uh three percent shred on everybody these bolts do not apply that shred because that shred is on attack it is not on hit as i've talked about before it is on attack your basic attacks okay so those bolts do not apply additional shred they do not also do not apply this area of effect okay so you know if it did apply it then one attack near three people would apply three stacks of shred on people because each one would proc the passive from the bolts it does not work that way if this worked this way if the righteous fury proc hit all three of them and did area of effect from all three of them to the other ones everyone would melt instantly because they would all take the secondary magic damage from each each person would basically take um a hurricane bolt plus two secondary magic procs and this would be it'd just be ridiculous that does not work that is not how that works okay poof that's out of your mind it does not work that way okay so when you get ronin's hurricane with kale it does not interact with her e it does not interact with her passive okay that's the key so don't it does not just no okay but the reason you would get this is if you have nasher's tooth it does interact with nasher's tooth okay so it would apply this extra damage here and if you get Runin's, or if you get um, Rage Blade,
Basic attacks deal plus 15 on hit damage. Okay. So that does apply. That does apply to Hurricane. So if you have Nasher's Tooth plus Rage Blade, each one of those hits does apply Hurricane. So Hurricane will deal that extra, you know, 30 base damage um, on hit. All right. I mean, this this feels like you're trying to solve like a calculus problem or something to figure out how these items interact with each other with Kale. Okay. But once again, Kale's E does not interact with this and her passive does not interact with this. However, if you go Hurricane, Hurricane does interact with Nasher and it does interact with Ginsu. Okay. There's going to be a quiz at the end of this. All right. So um, this is another hybrid item that would be very good, just like Nasher's it does. Has flat attack damage, has flat ability power, has flat attack speed. All right, does on hit. So basic attacks grant 8% attack speed, 3 attack damage, and 4 ability power for 5 seconds, stacking up to 6 times, granting a total of 48% attack speed, plus eight, 18 damage, plus 24 ability power. Okay, so that's a total of uh, 73 attack speed, 53 attack damage, and 74 ability power. So very good. At 6 stacks, you get Gensu's Rage Blade. Every other basic attack will trigger on hit effects an additional time. Okay? So notice this is basic attacks as well. This, is, this part is not on hit. So if you have a Hurricane... It is not, one attack is not going to stack this three times. So if you have Hurricane and you turn on Kale's E and attack twice, it's not going to give you six stacks. You have to attack the full six times, even if you have Hurricane, because this is not an on hit. Okay, this is an on attack, is basic attacks. There are no on hits here. So there's an on hit here, but there's not an on hit here. Okay, so each Hurricane Bolt will apply this portion. It will not apply additional stacks. Okay. Every other basic attack will trigger on hit effects an additional time. Okay, so your secondary attack. I think that's. Okay, this one's actually this one's actually confusing me. Okay, so with this one, every other basic attack will trigger on hit effects an additional time. I think that would apply to Hurricane. So let's say you attack your second time. Trigger on hit effects. No, I, no, I don't think it does because this is not an on hit. It's just triggering on hits. Um, so this would just be on your primary target would take an additional on hit. Which would be from the Gensus and from the Nashers. But your secondary targets would not take the double on hit. Trigger an additional on hit. Because this itself isn't on hit, it's on attack. Okay. Okay, so... Um, so this becomes very gold efficient. Base value per at six stacks. So at six stacks, it turns into fifty six sixty four, which is very very efficient. That's not including the on hit stuff. Okay, so so I mean, if you if you're confused by all of that, just. Nashers plus Rage Blade deals a lot of damage, but interacts in weird ways with Kale, so that it doesn't completely like slaughter teams instantly. It takes a couple of seconds to slaughter them. Okay, that's the TLDR. Those items are good on her for damage, but the way they interact with each other and Kale's E and uh, passive is wacky. Okay, that's <laughs> that's what you need to know. Now, this does not have CDR on it. This is why people do not rush this. They rush Nasher's Tooth first because you really want that CDR. You need to get to at least 30 to 40% CDR so that Kale has 100% uptime on her E or very close to it. That's very, very important for team fights because you can't just walk up and melee people. It's awful. You always want to have your E up as Kale. So you'll see most pro players, if you look at Kale like pro builds here, now there are not a lot of Kale games here, but most popular items are... Nasher, Rage Blade. All right, so those are the two most popular damage items. You can get Hurricane, like I said, and that will help you proc the extra whatever on people. Okay, but the extra on hits, but it sh Hurricane should probably be like your fourth or fifth item, most likely, because you want the ability power um, 
you want the ability power and attack damage and hurricane doesn't have that hurricane has crit and the on hit so it's cute it's a cute interaction with rage blade but it should you should only get that as a fourth or fifth item or maybe even not at all i mean if you just get nasher's tooth rage blade and then just go like other utility interactions now this is curious this now this is an interesting interaction this actually would apply to kale's passive leandri's torment now i'm not advocating that necessarily that you go get leandri's torment um but that is a spell effect and this says applying spell effects because leandri's is not on hit Leandre's is a spell effect. Spells burn enemies for three seconds. So this actually, with Kale's E, would apply to everybody that gets hit. So everybody would take 2% of their current health. Um, and it would refresh, but it refreshes. It's So it would just refresh. So I'm not sure how much they take of that on hit. That That's a bad word. On attack. Um, how much they would take of that but they would take some amount of that instantly i'm not sure it's of their current health i think it's too cute i mean you could go something i don't i don't even know like just don't don't go leandre's torment just don't do it i think it, it's a cute interaction it's interesting um the penetration is very nice it would improve that secondary damage by quite a lot you notice a lot of people aren't going for that it's okay. Now, something that I think is good that I don't see enough Kales get uh, later in the game is um, Hextech Gunblade. So I was going to talk about the itemization later, but whatever. I just started down that path. All right. Let me see the gold efficiency here. So it is very gold efficient. Um, now just the ability power and attack damage is only like 3140 efficient, so it's pretty close. You're paying like 300 for the vamp and for the bolt. Um, so this would apply a slow. You're already going to have a slow on your Q, but you could Q somebody and then, um, hex tech somebody else for a double slow. Um, but yeah, 40 ability power. Now this will heal you for quite a bit. So this is going to make you virtually unkillable because you heal for 15% of all physical, magic, and true damage that you deal. It's only 33% for area of effect, which is your E, but whatever. Like, you're going to be healing so much by the end of the game. So this would be like your last item. So if you wanted to go like a full damage build KO, you'd probably just go Nashers, Ginsu, uh, like Hurricane, Gunblade, or something like that. As like a top lane Kale kind of build. I'm not sure if you'd have enough gold to do that as support, but that would leave you enough room for mobility boots plus uh, Eye of the Oasis and then getting all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that'd be pretty. That'd be a pretty gross build. You can, just please don't go play the Ruined King. I mean, you can get this and get like Hurricane if you want to do that. That just sounds awful. Um, that stance just doesn't do enough for you. I think, really, if you want to go damage, just start with Nasher's Tooth. If you want an additional damage item, go to Gensu's after that. And that should be enough to be relevant. Um, if you need an additional damage item after that, then you could consider either Gunblade or... Um, Gunblade would give you a ton of healing. Or you could go for um, Hurricane for those on-hit interactions. I think Gunblade would probably have more utility than Hurricane. The crit doesn't really matter that much. It's okay. Uh, the extra on hit is nice. No, I don't know. I don't know. I do know that Nashers plus Gensu's should be the first two though. Okay, so let's get back let's get back to it here. So that's her E. Okay, so just Nasher, Rageblade, Bork, they do not interact with your E. However, they are still very good because they give you hybrid damage. Nasher gives you um attack speed and CDR which is really important. Um, and Rageblade gives you just a ton of really powerful stuff. <laughs> so you want that. Okay, so always max your E first. Um, depending on what you're doing, you can max your Q or your W next. All right. And finally, we get to her R. And this is kind of her another one of her signature things. You make someone invulnerable 
for uh, three seconds, up to three seconds, two to three. Now, this is very important. It's very different from other invulnerabil invulnerability moves. First of all, it's 600 range, which is massive. Now, aside, like, if we think about zillion, right, you can make someone invulnerable with zillion, where when they die, they come back with a lot of health, but that disables them for the duration. And it just lets your enemy just get ready to kill them again, right? They can drop a Caitlyn Trap on them. They can throw, like, a Victor Field on them. They can do whatever they want. As soon as they wake up, they just get free hits on them. And it stops them from doing their thing, right? They're disabled for three seconds or however long it is, like two and a half to three seconds. With this, they are not disabled at all. You put this on them, they can keep attacking, and they just take no damage. And this is very important for someone like Twitch. In the footage, I'm going to show you um, here in a little bit, show you some Kale footage. Twitch gets to keep his ult up and keep cranking his attacks, and that is key. That's what makes this ability so much different from other heavy protection abilities like Zillion, like a Tom Kench eat. If you eat somebody with Tom Kench, they can't keep attacking anymore. So Tom Kench plus um, Twitch is not a combo because Twitch has to do most of his damage when his ult is up, right? That's Twitch's whole thing. He has his ult, it does massive area of effect damage, and it only lasts for five seconds. So you dang well better finish the fight in five seconds if you're Twitch. Um... So a Kale ult helps him just keep cranky and not lose any DPS. So that's what makes it superior to Zillion and to um, Tom Kinch when you're dealing with a hyper carry that needs to stay up and keep attacking. Twitch is the best one because he is worthless without his ult, basically. So, you know, and then it's even really good on someone like Draven who can lifesteal a lot. So if you cast um, Intervention on Draven when he's at... 20% health or something like that, he gets so much lifesteal from his death stance that he can probably heal himself back up to full. Or a Master Yi with, um, who has Blade of the Ruined King can just auto attack, heal his way back up to full. So that's what makes Divine Intervention so much better than other options. Also, it's instant, right? So, you know, Tarek can provide a vulnerability, but you have to wait those two and a half seconds before it comes down. This is like, oh crap, someone's in trouble, boom, fixed. You know, temporary fix on it, so... Very, very powerful. Very low cooldown. Only 100 seconds. So that's just like, just a little bit over a minute and a half. It's a minute 40 seconds uh, of a one. So, that's very powerful. Um, now, you can be CC'd while they're invulnerable. So someone could like Fiddlesticks fear um, the Kale ulted person, or they could stun them with other kinds of interactions. Um, that's what makes Mikhail's on Kale pretty popular because a lot of times, especially at the higher end players, now this is not going to apply as much in bronze and silver, a lot of people just spam all of their abilities at the start of a fight anyways. They don't plan around a KO ult. Um, but at higher levels of play, they might start doing this a little bit platinum, but they'll definitely start doing it at diamond. They will hold crowd control for the person who gets KO ulted. So they won't use their all of their CC at the same time on Twitch when he shows up. Someone will hold it and wait until he gets KO ulted, and then they'll crowd control him. So Mikhail's helps you break out of that so that your Twitch can keep firing. All right, so that's why a lot of these uh, support kills will go um, Mikhail's Crucible. It doesn't... Yeah, here you go. That's actually top lane Kale, but that's probably the troll build top lane Kale. I assume, is there like a Master Yi or something? Yeah. This is the Kale Master Yi. Um, I'll, I'll mention that here in a second. Well, I'll go ahead and mention it. Um, so Kale Master Yi has been a combo that if you've never played against this, it is brutal top lane, especially against a team that doesn't know what to do about it. Um, so what you do, this is a Chinese booster strategy. So you'll have, this is popularized in China. Um, and now it, I've seen it probably three times in solo queue. And I think it's one, Almost every time. There might be one time where it failed. No, it, it was on my team one time and it failed. And on the enemy time twice, it has worked. So what you do is you run a Master Yi in the jungle. You run a Kale top lane. Kale will start with... This isn't telling earlier items for some reason. The build order or this. I don't know. It's incomplete data. But what you do... Typically the Kale will take heal top lane. Let me see if there's one that has the heal build. Here we go. So Bjergsen was doing it. Yes. Okay. So you go top lane, you have a Master Yi on your team, like right here. He's top lane Kale. Um, you come in, you start off with uh, two Fairy Charms, a Refillable Potion, and a Ward. Okay? 
So you ward and you just do your best to farm top. You're going to get slaughtered. Okay, so you're only going to have like 10 CS and the enemy top laner is going to crush you in CS. Um, but you you run heal and um, typically you'll take wind speakers as your master. Yep, he's got wind speakers. Um, he'd go a lot of attack speed, which is weird. Max your heal with Yi, and then what happens is Yi will do his first clear, and then he will just sit top lane and take all your farm, and you're, it basically turns into a 2v1 lane. So you just sit top, you give all of your farm to Yi. It doesn't say how much CS they have on this, but you give all of your farm to Yi, you rush uh, Ardent Sensor, and then typically Knight's Vow after that. Usually the game's over by that point. Um, but you could also get uh, Athenes is a good item. We'll talk about that here in a second. You can also do Mikhail's um, after that. But the core is Ardent Sensor Knight's Vow. You put your Knight's Vow on your Yi. You press your um, W. You max your W, which is what he did. Um, it gives that extra move speed, you know, that 30% minimum extra move speed on the Yi to help him run people down. Uh, it gives him the Ardent Sensor buff, so he gets the extra on hit and uh, attack speed he goes for an on hit e build which is this that's basically um boy the rune king gensu's and blood razor is the key he goes in there you wait till he gets kind of low you kale ult him he heals himself back up to full you can heal him again um and it's just brutal so Yi ends up getting all of the farm top lane you eventually take top lane tower uh he gets his items very very quickly you can see he had the vast majority of kills in this game. And he died a decent amount. He goofed something up because they don't have a lot of CC there. Um, <clears throat> but he gets a ton of farm, ton of kills, and uh, just goes off. So that's something that you can do top lane with Kale if you want to. We're talking about support Kale here. That is a way that if you have a friend who's like, it works best with Master Yi, their interactions are just so crazy. I mean, you could try to do it with something like maybe a Kha'Zix. Um, but really just the kit interacts so well with Master Yi because he benefits so much from Ardent Sensor and from the movement speed and from the ultimate um, that Master Yi really is the person that you want to run it with. <clears throat> but anyways, okay, so that's it for her abilities. Let's go ahead and talk about her builds. I've already mentioned a lot of the items, so what should you actually get as Kale? Oh, Strengths and Weaknesses. So she has great pushing power. She can push the lane easily with her E. Excellent team fighting power. You can AoE shred people in team fights. You can protect your core carry. You can help people reposition with your W, which also happens to have a nice heal on it. You can slow somebody down, kite them, chase them. She has a lot of good good options. She doesn't have hard CC. She only has slows. So if they have a very fed assassin that's very mobile and has low cooldowns, then that can be a problem. So you can use your ult to protect against a Zed or a... Um, like a Fizz ult or something like that. But if it's something like a Cassidan or a LeBlanc that has very low cooldowns, um, that could just kind of bait out your KO ult and just wait until it wears off and then go back in to kill him, that's going to be a problem. So she doesn't have hard CC, but she does have very nice slows and um, protection. It's a great for protecting against those heavy burst assassins, your Talons, your Fizz, your, um, your Zed, Rengar, stuff like that. It's going to be pretty good. And you have the high damage option if you need it, or if you want it. So limited CC, she is very squishy, she has long CD, CDs, and she has a very expensive build. However, with the new Eye of the Oasis, that might actually open up a space to make Kale more viable because she can build those more expensive items. Nasher's Tooth is not too bad, it's only 3,000 gold. Rageblade, I think, is 3,600, right? Yes, yeah, so this one's on the expensive side. So the Tooth is a, a fantastic bargain. Um, but this, a little bit less so, but, uh, it can still be a good option. All right. So matchup. So she's excellent with Twitch. I think this is the best scenario because he just wants to stand still and fire his ult and there's no other support that really can cover him like that. I mean, maybe Janna could just peel everybody back and just let him auto attack. Um, but he's the best case scenario. Draven's another good one because he does massive damage and he can heal himself up. Uh, Master Yi is fantastic. I mentioned that before. Jinx is fantastic. Um, once again, if she gets some kills, she gets a lot of attack speed. She can reposition and just snowball a whole fight. So if you can keep her up, 
until she manages to get a kill or an assist, then she can clean up the rest of the fight. And Cassiopeia, um, I know that Alice mentioned specifically that she likes to support someone who likes to play um, AP carries in the bottom lane. And I'm not sure exactly who she had in mind. She didn't tell me. Um, but if you're going to do an AP bottom lane, I highly recommend that be Cassiopeia with Kale. Um, now you can do Ziggs. But the reason that I think Cassiopeia is important is because she has lots of sustained damage. And that's what you need from your bot lane typically. Usually it's AD damage. However, sustained damage is core because a lot of AP champions or just AD champions that they're going to play in the mid and the top lane. And I think this can be viable, you know, if you have, if people are trying out lethality, if they're running like Talon mid, uh, you know, top lane, Pantheon, and Jungle Rengar, then running an AP bottom lane makes perfect sense. Um, and I don't know if your friend likes Cassiopeia, she's hard to play correctly, but Alice or anyone else out there that wants to run an AP bottom. But, you know, I think that she is a good choice because she has such very heavy um, sustained damage. She gets, she scales really well because she doesn't have to buy boots. Now, she is susceptible to gank, so you got to be careful with that. But she pushes really well. She has great wave clear. She has great sustained damage, great Baron control, great dragon control, um, excellent AoE team fighting, um, and just really high sustained damage. So what that means is when you KO ult and she just gets to sit there and do her thing, just, you know, spam twin fangs on people, basically, um, it's going to just be an astronomical amount of damage in a team fight. So I highly recommend that. Another popular one in the past has been Ziggs, who does pretty good damage. But Ziggs' thing is he pokes from afar and he takes towers quickly and he ults. So if you ult him with Kale. It is going to be nice, but he's not going to output as much damage as Cassiopeia will. At least sustained damage. He's more of a burst champion. And those are really the only two I would recommend for bottom lane. Um, I suppose maybe you could go something like a Mordekaiser bot lane. Um, but I feel like a lot of times your bot laner needs to be ranged so you can actually siege. But yeah, I would highly recommend... I mean, I can do a guide on Cass if anyone's interested out there in commissioning a guide on Cassiopeia. I could research it, practice it, and do a guide on it. Um, but she's the person that I think would be best. Mordekaiser, they've marketed him as a bot lane champion. That could be interesting, but he is melee. So that does make it a little more challenging. Although, you know, if he goes like melee and you're Kale and you build the damage build on Kale, then maybe that could be interesting. The support Kale could end up being the damage Kale bot lane. Um, I mean, Katarina, in theory, would be another good one. Um, she just, she's not ranged, but obviously if she gets resets, if you can just keep her alive long enough while she's Death Lotusing, um, she could actually be a pretty good one, because she does really high, uh, sustained damage as well, as long as she gets those resets. So, you know, what I would recommend, if you want to do an AP bottom, I recommend in this order, probably, um, Cassiopeia, Ziggs. Katarina. Vlad might be another one. V oh, Victor would be a good one too. He does really nice sustain damage. He has burst and sustain. So Victor might be another one. Um, so maybe Cassiopeia, Victor, Ziggs, Cat, and he's ranged. Historically, I would have said Rise, but he's very diff. I mean, Cassiopeia is difficult to play too, but so is Rise, and I feel like his damage has been lowered quite a lot over time but rise is another one you could take a peek at and see what you think he does have great wave clear um and he would do a lot of sustained damage if you kale ult him okay so that's five champions i would recommend that you could look into um cassiopeia victor ziggs katarina rise and then like maybe like vlad with a question mark <clears throat> I mean, you can try burst stuff. You can try like Echo, Syndra, things like that. Syndra might be another one. But I'm just thinking like to really leverage that KO ult, you need someone who can just put their head down and just like crank. Just crank some damage, I think. Okay. So, good with Twitch, Draven, Jinx, E, Cass, good against. Uh, Tom, Braum, Ali, all of these people are going to give you a free lane. Basically, if they want to engage on you, you can probably turn and fight them really easily, especially once you get your ult. Um... So I think that she basically gets a free lane. You just push these guys in. They're not going to do anything to you most of the time in lane. It's a free lane against them. 
Um, and then Zed, Rengar, and Fizz rely very heavily on burst damage off of their ults. And so your ult cancels that out pretty well. I think she's bad with champions that don't scale very well. So Lucian, Ezreal, Sivir immediately come to mind. Uh, Jen is another one that can do okay later in the game, but still has a lot of problems against a lot of other hyper carries. And she's bad against hyper carries that are probably going to scale better than you're going to scale on your team. So Draven, Trist, Jinx, and Sona are all going to be tough because you don't have hard CC to get on them. Um, so yeah, you can ult somebody and protect them for a couple of seconds, but they can just back off. And then just go right back at him and murder him once time's up. So you want to make sure you have the higher scaling person on your team. Kind of like Janna, in a sense. Okay, how are we looking on time? I think we're running a little bit later. No, we're doing okay, we're doing okay. Let's see if we can keep this to like an hour, hour 15 or so. Um. Okay, so this is not the end-all, be-all. You know, there are other things that she could be good with, or good against, or bad with, or bad against. But this is just the stuff that jumped immediately to my mind. Um, so your core build, you always want to rush mobility boots and you always want to rush Eye of the Isis. Mobility boots helps you get around the map, rotate, get to the place where you need to be, ward uh, more efficiently, get back to lane so you get that experience. Mobility boots are just a must on everybody except for the most hardcore of hardcore engaged tanks that have to have Ninja Tabi or the all-in damage AP supports that just maybe have to have Sork boots like Zyra or Brand. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, almost always. And Eye of the Oasis, because it gives you coin, which is going to give you a ton of mana early on. It's going to let you keep pushing and just heal through anything that comes at you. And it's going to give you a ton of gold, just like an absolute just truckload of gold, which will help you buy your expensive items if you want to go for a more damage-focused build. Okay, so the Hyper Booster build, this is probably um, what I would recommend a lot of the time. And you can combine some of these builds, too. But this is where you have someone like a Twitch that you just really want to boost up and have them do a ton of damage. I think Ardent Sensor, Zeke's Convergence, very good. You can trigger the Ardent Sensor with your W. Um, the fight will probably be over within six seconds if you do that. Another neat trick is if you don't want to run Wind Speakers, you can run um, Stoneborn Pact. And then whenever you press Q on somebody, anyone that hits them is going to get... For three seconds, anyone that hits them is going to get the Ardent Sensor buff. So if you have a bunch of auto attackers on your team, let's say that you have a Twitch, a Master Yi, and your top lane is, um, I don't know, uh, Kled or something like that, then you can go um, Ardent Sensor with uh, Stoneborn Pact and then just Q them, and then all three of those people will get the uh, will get the Ardent Sensor buff. I talk about that in my patch notes for seven point. 112, I think, uh, when they introduce Zeke's Convergence. So that's that's a decent option. You really don't need Wind Speakers because you only have one heal in your kit. It's okay. A lot of people will get it anyways. Um, so you're not really losing a lot by going Stoneborn Pact instead of Wind Speakers. You're losing 5% CDR, which is significant, but it's okay. Uh, Zeke's Convergence is another one. You don't need a lot of um, the tank stats, but they're okay. It does have CDR, and you have a really low cooldown ult that's going to allow your AD carry to just really crank out that damage. So since you're going to have a hyper carry anyways, if you run Ardent plus Zeke's, that's just a massive amount of damage that you're going to be dealing. So that's a good option. Uh, Redemption's always a good buy. I mean, it's great for team fighting. Um, Mikhail is another one that um, if they crowd control your AD carry or whomever, your AP carry, while they're ulted, then you can cleanse the crowd control so that they can keep attacking with Mikhail. So... Decent option. You could go hybrid here if you wanted. I mean, you could build Athenes as well there, or you could build... Um, uh, you could even go, like, Nashers, Rage Blades. You could go Ardent, Zeke's, Nashers, Rage Blade if you want to boost up your AD carry and then have uh, Nashers plus Rage Blade. I know Alice said that she wants to play with the AP carry, but I'm just making this an all-purpose guide. A lot of the time, you would want to play Kale with an hyper AD carry as well, the ones that I mentioned up here. The Twitch Draven Jinx in particular. So you it would definitely be Ardent, Zeke's most of the time, and then Redemption, Mikhail's optional. <clears throat> and you can mix and match. Okay, the utility build. So this would be a good one if um for your AP carry, if you don't really want to do if you're not that interested in doing a ton of damage, you just want maximum kind of team utility. You could go Redemption, Athene's Unholy Grail, um, Mikhail's and Knight's Vow. So this would give you the cleanse for your ult once again. 
You could also go lock it if you wanted to instead of Knight's Vow. Knight's Vow, you will have the full amount um, to protect your AD carry. Now, once you turn on your E, I believe you'll only get half the amount. Because it said um, she becomes a ranged champion. So I think it would only give you a little bit of the amount off of um, Knight's Vow. So you can either go that or lock it. You could do just a standard Redemption's lock it if you want and go from there. Um, Athene's is very good because, and that Athene's scales very well with um, your Redemption Ardent Sensor package. So you could just go Redemption Ardent Sensor here, then Athene's would be a pretty good package as well for utility. Um, Ardent Sensor really is good. I mean, think even if you have an AP carry, it still gives you, as the bottom laner, it still gives you the AP, it gives you the move speed, and it helps other people on your team. So if you have a Master Yi in the jungle, or a Kled top, or some other auto attacker in mid lane, it doesn't just have to be your bot laner. So it's still pretty good. It gives you the healing, gives you the cooldown reduction, the AP, the movement speed. Kale likes all of this. Um, and it'll give uh, everyone on your team that bonus, potentially. So I would consider getting it, even if you have an AP carry bottom. Um, then Athene's, of course, whenever you do your heal, you're going to do a ton of damage. Um, now, if you go Stoneborn Pact, the heal off of Stoneborn Pact does benefit from Athene's. So if you're healing off of Stoneborn for uh, 20 damage, it would double to 40 damage heal off of that. So that can be some pretty powerful on-hit interactions, especially with... Um, Ardent Sensor. So if you have Ardent Sensor and then you go with Thines and you have Stoneborn Pact, all of the healing off of Stoneborn would basically be doubled because you're going to be doing so much extra damage with the Thines and just constantly stacking those blood charges. So it not only um, buffs up the heal on your W, which would only come up once every 7 to 8 seconds, but it would also heal everybody for a ton of extra if you have Stoneborn Pact. I mean, I'll show that really quick. <clears throat> your crowd controls brand the enemy okay so that's going to be your Q brand the enemy with an earthen rune for 4 runes other allied champions who attack the enemies heal for um so if you're ranged it's going to be halved so you're going to be ranged most of the time is Kale when this is procking to 2.5 plus 1.5% of your maximum health and it's 40% for the instant. So, um, one point five percent of your maximum health. Okay, so that would only be so if you have, you know, two thousand health or whatever, that would be two and a half percent of your maximum health, which would be uh fifty. So you'd be healing for fifty probably of Stoneborn Pack. But then that would also trigger um, the Athene, so then they would heal for 100. So 100 on hit healing is not not that bad <laughs> for Q. Um, so it, it's an interesting uh, possibility if you want to go Stoneborn Athenes. That's decent honor. And then the damage build I would recommend, you would probably go um, Nasher's Rageblade Gunblade. Nasher's Rageblade, Gunblade, and if you want to, Hurricane is the last one. Um, remember, you can mix and match these two, so if you want to go for the Hyper Booster, you could go Ardent, Zeke's, um, Nasher, Gunblade, or Nasher, Rageblade, if you want to do that. So there, there's just so many different options. This is just kind of like the very generic cookie cutter type of options for Kale. There's a ton. So with like an AP carry, I would say... Um, you know, you could go something like Redemption, Athene's, Nasher, Hurricane, or not, uh, Nasher, Rageblade, rather. That would give you some damage. It would give you um, the, uh, the healing from Redemption, from Athene. You could also throw in Ardent Sensor, so you could go like Redemption, Ardent Sensor, if other people on your team are doing pretty well. Um, Nasher Rageblade, or you could go Gunblade after that if it's going to be a long fight. Because remember, the healing off of Gunblade does get boosted by your own plus healing and shielding. So, if you're not running Athenes, you don't want to run the Stoneborn combo, you could run um, Windspeaker, and that would be 30% plus healing and shielding off of your um, Redemption, 
wind speakers, ardent sensor, and then that would apply to your gunblade healing. So you'd get 30% more healing off of gunblade. Um, so that, I mean, that, that could be pretty strong. So there's just a ton of different options. There's a ton of different options here that you can mix and match. And I know that doesn't make it really easy to figure out your itemization, but I would say with an AP carry, I would probably go something along the lines. Like I said, I would probably get get Nashers in there for some extra damage. Um, Redemption seems like a must in most situations. If you really don't want Ardent, you can go um, Athenes. And if they have a lot of crowd control, you can go Mikhail's. So you could go Redemption, Athenes, Mikhail's, Nasher. Might be a good uh, sort of bargain there. Okay, so which runes to run? I think attack speed runes are probably where you want to be with your reds. You could run dual penetration runes if, if you want to, but I think attack speed is just going to be the best with Kale, so you can stack up your um, your shred faster. Armor yellow is the standard on everybody. Uh, AP blues is probably the best. Um, that'll help you with your wave clear. That will help you with... Um, uh, your heal, it'll help you with a lot of stuff. You can go magic resist if they have a heavy poke lane, but with your coin, um, mana that you're going to get, and your innate heal that you have with your W, you should be able to heal through most things. Then I think uh, attack speed quints with one armor quint, just because you're going to need a little bit more armor in the lane since you don't have it here. Um, you could go wind speakers, probably the standard. That will help with your W. Um, that will also help uh, if you go redemption, which is very common. It's another combo, um, you know, when you go for ulting somebody, if they're at 30% health, is you ult somebody and then you press redemption and then pretty soon after your ult wears off, they're going to get hit with the redemption. Um, so it allows them to have enough time to survive so your redemption hits them. So pretty powerful combination. Stoneborn, once again, if you have a bunch of attackers on your team and you want the cool interaction with um, Ardent Sensor, in your Q, then you can do it that way. So remember that interaction is just you go Stoneborn, you press Q on somebody while they're slowed. Anytime anyone attacks, they're going to get the Ardent Sensor buff. That's all you need to know. Okay, so that's an interesting interaction if you have two or three really heavy auto attackers on your team. Even if it's an AP carry bottom, it could be worth considering. Okay, so how to lane in general? Be flexible. So you can be aggressive in some matchups against tanks. You can push them out. Um, but you also scale a lot harder than a lot of other supports, especially if you go for the damage build. So um, you don't you don't need to feel pressure to really be powerful early on. Um, and you know, I've had I had someone comment, and people have commented like this in the past. Um, and I talk about this in my laning video, and I'm going to talk about it with my critical thinking video that I have forthcoming pretty soon. Um, you don't you shouldn't always think i have to play this lane a certain way with this champion you need to be flexible not only for compositions and kale has probably the most flexible build path of any support that i've covered so far i mean there's you can build almost anything on her um but in general you need to be aware okay you need to think critically about what you're doing because i had someone critique me from last stream and he didn't reference a specific game but he said in general He's like, oh, you always stand behind your ADC and you never attack or help them out and you always complain and trash talk your ADC and you need to step up and like help them last hit under tower and be more aggressive. In theory, that's true. You should be aggressive. You should be looking for trades. But it depends on matchups and it depends on the behavior and the itemization of your AD carry. Okay? So even though, like, let's say that I pick Zyra bot lane, for example. Let's say we have... Um, a Zyra Ash or something like that. And Ash goes um, Vampiric Scepter first because she's going to build Blather and King. And let's say that they have um, Jin Sona or something like that, right? Yes, Zyra should be aggressive. You should be poking. But you can't do that in that lane because they have a Sona. Sona heals. So what that means is that your lane that's traditionally very aggressive, you can't do it. Also, Ash does not have a lot of burst damage. And I think this was something kind of like what the guy was talking about in the comments. He was thinking I should be very aggressive with Zyra. You can't do it if Ash is behind on items, which she is when she gets Vamp Scepter and Jen comes back with a Serrated Dirk or a BF Sword. Um, that's just the nature of the matchup, right? So in theory, yes, Zyra should be aggressive. Um, but in actual practice, we're behind on itemization, and Sona's going to heal through your poke. 
So the only way to really kill Sona in lane is to all in her. You do not want to trade with Sona most of the time. Like maybe Nami can trade with her, but there's very few people that can trade with Sona in lane because she's just going to heal through it, especially when she gets Ancient Coin because that's going to give her back so much mana, she's going to have almost infinite mana in lane. So you just can't trade with her, even though it looks like, oh, Zyra, very aggressive. You can make all these plays. You can't do it early in the lane. Now it's different if I have Zyra Draven because if I actually catch Sona with the root, we can all in with Draven once he gets his Sari to Dirk or BF Sword and kill her. But you can't do that with an Ash that goes Vampiric Scepter. And so when I talk about that and why I don't like Bork, I'm not trying to belittle people or make fun of people. I'm saying that that basically forfeits the lane. And there's nothing I can do about that as support. I can hit Zyra with, or uh, Sona with every root that I possibly can. And she's just going to heal through it because there's going to be no follow-up from Ash. Right? And so... Kale, and just to circle that back to Kale, so just that's a good point to keep in mind in general. You have to think critically about matchups. You can't just play a lane the same way every time. Or if it's something like Draven, let's say it's even Draven versus Ezreal, which looks like a steamroll. If we get ganked two or three times and Ezreal's up 3 0 on the lane and he has a Sheen plus Man Immune and Draven, and we're against like Ezreal Sona and we are Draven Zyra. You'd have to be down quite a lot, but, you know, let's say that Ezreal's up three or four kills from ganks. He has a full man immune plus a sheen, and Sona also has a sheen or something. She's building, like, damage Sona um, because she's so far ahead. Then all of a sudden, we can't really go in as much if Draven only has a Sari to Dirk or a BF Sword if we're really far behind. So even matchups that look like they're extremely advantageous for you it could be rough. So that's just something for all supports to keep in mind. But as far as Kale... You don't have to feel pressured to dominate the early game. You can dominate. So if you're with a Draven and you're Kale and you're against, like, I don't know, Alistar Ezreal, you can push them into lane and bully them out. But if you're against a Sona Draven and your lane is like Kale Ziggs, you can also just chill, and you probably should. Um, just chill in that lane. <coughs> so you can be aggressive, but you can also be defensive. Um so be flexible in your build as well. I think I talk about that somewhere down here. Rush the Mobies, rush the Eye of the Oasis, and then think about what your team needs. Do you need damage? You know, is your top lane Pantheon really far behind and just building straight tank at this point because he's died five times? Um, do you have a Nunu in the jungle who's not going to be doing any damage hardly? Um, do you have a Zillion middle who's probably going to be doing very low damage? Or do you have a ton of hyper carries on your team? Do you have a, a Katarina middle, a Kled top, and a Master Yi jungle? So you can think, okay, I don't need damage because they're all doing pretty well. You know, we're about even on kills. It's five to five. I finished my Eye of the Oasis and Moby Boots. So I can just go utility because I don't need damage. So I can just get, you know, Ardent Sensor, Redemption, um, and like Athenes and move on from there. So I don't need damage. So just think carefully about whether your team needs your damage or not. Remember, damage is more expensive than utility. So Rageblade and Nasher's Tooth look like a lot of fun, but Nasher's Tooth is 3,000 gold and Rageblade is 3,600, whereas Redemption's 2,100. Um, Ardent Sensor is 2,300. Zeke's Convergence, uh, 23 or 2,400. Mikhail's 2,100. Um, Athene's 2,100. So, you know, the damage items cost about 50% more gold than the utility. So if your team's already doing all right on damage... You should probably just go utility a lot of the time. That's why most. That's why you don't see Janna running around with Deathcap most of the time. It's cool. She does scale very well with AP, but it just costs so much gold that you just aren't going to find it. It's just not efficient. Um, and that's why a lot of these support Kales, if you look... Where is it? Now, pro builds is not always indicative of an entire meta. Um, and if you look at the people who are going support Kale, now this was a top lane Kale that was building support, but if we look at like true support Kales here that have exhaust, a lot of times they build utility, right? So Perks here is building, um, you know, Ardent Sensor, Locket, Redemption. So just straight utility. He's not building Nashers. The people who are building Nashers are the top laners. And the reason is that's because they get a lot of gold. You get way more gold, obviously, when you get to last hit CS um, than you do as the support. This is another support Kale, Rush Redemption. Um, so you can build damage, just don't think you always have to build full damage as Kale bot lane. It is an option if you need it, but
but just be aware it's going to be more expensive than normal. Okay, so if the enemy doesn't have a heal, try to trade early. So if they have, you know, a Braum or they have a Tom Kench or something, get in their face, force some trades. Um, you know, if they have a Lulu, uh, get up there, trade with them, because you have a heal and they don't. So don't take, like, ridiculously bad trades, but you can take a little bit of damage to do damage to them because you have a heal and they don't. Be aware of Doran's shield, though. If they have a Doran shield, it's going to be very hard to harass him down, and that, basically that item forces a farm off lane. <coughs> um... Rush Oasis, uh, plus Moby every game, and then like I said, just think, do I need damage? Is a hyper carry fed? How should I itemize? And just think carefully about what your team needs. Think about these paradigms that I talked about up here, these three, which path do you need to go down? And you can mix and match between these, but this is just a good starting point for thinking in your mind about what do I need to do? Utility, damage, or hyper booster. Um... Be careful with your push hard, but watch out for ganks. So you can get ganked very easily. You don't have great escapes, but you have awesome push. So try to push them in the tower over and over again. Force their jungler to come down there. This will take some heat off your mid lane and your top lane. Just make sure you don't die while you're doing that. All right. Um, be careful in all ends. So back up when your E is off CD. This is the number one way that people will attack Kale is if your E is, if they see that your E is down, they're going to know they can go at you for six seconds. So... Push a wave with your E and then back up. Do, do not try to fight them while your E's on cooldown. They should not be able to at hard engage on you because you're going to have all dominions. So just E, push, back up. Push, back up. Just keep doing that over and over. It'll force them to last hit under tower, and it'll do incremental damage to the tower. Okay, and then don't forget to kite. So as you attack, just like any AD carry, just step back, attack, step back, attack, step back, attack. This takes a little bit of time, but you don't just want to sit there and auto-attack. You want to always be attack moving to reposition all right save your ult for priority targets do not get out of position and have to ult yourself that's really bad as kale you want to always be hanging out near the back as much as you can it's not your job to kill their hyper carries it's your job to protect your carry and just to shred people that are trying to attack your carry okay so make sure that you're in a safe position so that you don't have to ult yourself and then ult your carry when you need to all right and then in team fights just hit the closest target peel for 80 carry Watch for good opportunities to see if you can get multi-hits in. Um, and then ult your key target. A lot of times it's going to be the AD carry or your AP carry friend. But realistically, sometimes someone else on your team might be fed. So you might have a Master Yi that's 8-1 and one, and your buddy, your duo bot, is having a rough game and maybe they're 1-5. and five. Just explain to your buddy, hey, I'm going to go ahead and start ulting this Yi because he's so powerful or this Kled because he's so powerful. Um... If, you're, if your team, if your duo really wants to win, they will understand that. And you need to ult the thing that's going to give you the best chance to win a team fight. So a lot of times it is the AD carry or your AP carry, but sometimes it might be someone else if they're having a better game and they scale a little bit harder. Is that right, Sadie? That's right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you some footage really quick. And it's about the amount of time that I thought it would take. So I'm going to show you some footage really quick. I've got some timestamps here. I've muted the video. Okay, hopefully, can we go? How do we go? Oh, here we go. Okay, um, so first, let's see, we'll go to laning. So this is kind of how you want to play it. I'll just show a little bit of footage here. Um, there's not a fight that happens, so I won't show a lot of this. It was just kind of a farm off. Sorry if you can hear my daughter sort of screaming, but you see how I'm eating and then just attacking this back line? I don't want to get it too low to where Twitch is going to miss last hits. But I just want to prep the wave for him. This was a viewer game on viewers night on Tuesday. I'll talk about that at the end of the video here in a minute too. Um, <clears throat> so you notice I'm just attacking. They can't really attack into us right now. It's Ezreal, Janna. So they're not going to punish us that hard when my E's on cooldown. Walk up. Just turn on E. Just attack a little bit. I start attacking the back line a little bit. Remember you don't want him to miss last hit. So you just... Chip in a little bit of damage. Keep pushing them in. It's going to force Ezreal to last hit. You notice it's doing a little bit of chip damage to the tower. It doesn't look like much, but this adds up. You know, over the course of five minutes doing this, um, their tower will fall. So as you're backing up, just pushing the wave a little bit, just auto-attacking, trying to make sure Twitch doesn't miss CS. Okay, so Janna tries to punish me for my E being on cooldown. She can't do anything because she's Janna. Janna, by the, by the way, I say that with love. She's the most powerful support on this patch, I think. I have guides about her in tons of videos. But she is not um, 
She is not the best in early game uh, two on twos, especially with uh, passive eighty carries. So we're just pushing. All right, so this is just how the lane should go against this type of lane, where it's just easy Janna, and it's just pretty much like you can just free farm push it. Okay, so this is what the guy was complaining about in the comments. I never helped CS or last hit or whatever. He just doesn't pay attention, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, you should you should help your AD carry push like that. Okay, so some moments of interest here. I'm going to go forward to some more interesting things. Let's see. We get our first kind of good lane fight here. We got ganked and killed there. Around 1310. Okay, so this is pretty close. <clears throat> Still pushing. Okay, so I start hitting. Janna's really far out of position. I hit her with the W. I'm just like, okay, we're going to really fight her here. Okay, so she decides to try to fight in turn. I We exhaust. I'm holding my ult. I'm trying to bait him. Okay, go ahead and use it on him. Zezreel does have a couple of items. In theory, if he hit a full combo, he might have been able to kill him. So I just went ahead and ulted. A very short cooldown. It's fine. So they got away with just a little pinch of uh, pinch of health. I didn't want to flash under. They had already used their heal, but I wasn't sure if the jungler was going to show up, and I didn't have my ult. So I just just don't flash under tower to go for kills. Just don't. It's a good thing in life. We're going to get this tower anyways, most likely because they had to back. So keep auto attacking. We're probably going to get it on the next wave. All right, so we just push in and go. All right, so another moment of interest. That's just kind of what you want to do. Hang out with your AD carry. Use your ult at the right time. You don't have to wait until they're at like 5% health. Just go ahead and use it when they're at 30 or 40% health. Now, I could have given him the gold, but I'm not sure if the mid laner or the jungler is coming, so I just wanted to make sure we finish that off. Okay, let's go to 1900 here. A little more kill footage. I have probably about six spots. Okay. So we're chasing this Mordekaiser down. He's healing. He's fighting. He's pretty scary. He's fed. <clears throat> he's got a gun blade. Now I'm being careful because he could be in that bush and almost one-shot me. Okay, so Twitch is trying to ult. Now notice, look at how much this speeds him up, that W, for three seconds. That allows Twitch to stay on him with the red buff. Twitch is cautiously attacking. Okay, I'm going to get my speed up again here in a second. Now, I think we could have gone for that Ezreal, but because his E was on cooldown, so he used it, but that's fine. Okay, so I just wanted to show how your W can speed people up and help them catch some runners. All right, now let's go to some team fights here. So we have 26, 2600. Okay, so we're positioning around Dragon. Twitch is going in stealth. All right. So I ult him because he just got hit. Uh, he flashed out because he was scared. Um, this will happen sometimes with KO. That's why it's better to be on like voice comms to say I'm going to ult you or whatever. I actually was on voice comms with this guy. This was from Viewer Night. Uh, but I, it was my fault for not announcing that I was going to ult him. Okay. Yep, so we just peeled the Twitch. So yeah, just ulted, peeled Twitch, sped people up. Uh, Janet tries to run in and steal it with a tornado. All right, let me close my door. My wife's, I don't know what she's doing in there. The daughter. Be some breastfeeding or something going on in there. Um, okay, so that was a pretty good team fight. Let's look at another one here. Let's go up to uh, 4130. We start to get a bunch of good team fights here. Okay, so my itemization, I did go, uh, if you can watch kind of the progression here, I did go Ardent Sensor first to help the Twitch out, and then um, I start just going Nasher's Tooth for a little bit of damage, and the CDR applies my Shred a little bit faster. Okay, where are we going? <clears throat> 4130. Now keep in mind, I mean, I'm 0 02 and 11, so I'm getting a decent amount of gold. I've had coin the entire game. It's 39 minutes into the game. And all I've been able to afford is Ardent Sensor and Nasher's Tooth. Okay. Now remember, Ardent Sensor is 2,300 gold. So if you're trying to go Ginsu's Rage Blade plus, Nasher, plus Nasher's Tooth, um, 
I still would not be able to afford Rage Blade at a 40 minute game because Chain Vest is only uh, 800 gold. It's so 800 plus 2300. I guess I would. I would just now be finishing it. 800 plus 2300 is 3100. Gensu's is 3600 plus 500. So I would have a little bit to spare here. If I back. So if I backed right now, so around 39 to 40 minutes in a game where we're dominating. Uh, we have all the towers. We've gotten a ton of dragons. Well, not all the towers, but all the first tier towers. Dragons. I have 11 assists. And I've had coins since I rushed it right away. And just now, I would be able to finish my second damage item as support. That's why I'm saying that damage items as support is a nice fantasy, but you're just not going to have the gold a lot of times to afford it. So I would just now be able to complete um, Gensu's. So, you know, all these builds might say, go Nashers, uh, you know, Nashers, Gensu's, Hurricane, uh, Gunblade, or something like that. Or God forbid, Bork. Um, you, you're not going to have the gold for all of that. So... Um, I think I'm going Knight's Vow right now. The so Nashers is a good buy at 3,000, but 3,600 for Gunblade, it, or um, for uh, Rage Blade is pretty, uh, pretty steep. Okay, so we're going to 4,130. Okay, so it's going to creep up here. Another fight for Dragon. Alright, so you notice I'm kind of staying back. I'm boosting Twitch up a little bit. Um, put the Knight's Vow on him. Okay, so he's opened up. He's doing his ult now. Okay, exhaust. I don't blow exhaust and ult. I'm still holding ult. Okay, now Kane's on him, so I'm going to go ahead and ult him now that Kane's attacking him. Prevent a lot of that damage. Uh, Twitch heals it up with his Bork. He's going for me. Oof, there's a lot of damage. Okay, heal him up. So you notice I didn't use all my stuff. I spaced it out. I exhausted first, kind of measured the damage. He wasn't taking a ton of damage. So I was like, okay, I can wait on this. Did you see how much that heal was, by the way? Off my W, that was massive. It healed like half his health. Because I have Ardent plus Wind Speaker, so it's 20% extra healing. And Nashers gives a lot of AP also, and so does Ardent. So my AP right now is 166. So yeah, that Wind Speaker's probably just healed for 400. Four or five hundred. Um, okay, so pretty good fight. We've got another one lined up here. 42, 45. Okay, what's coming up like right now? I think we fight around Baron. Okay, so my ult's already back up. We just killed Dragon, cleared a wave, ult's back up. They have a huge wave bottom that they're losing out on. So we just decide, yep, Janna went down there to farm it. So we have a 45 if they want to come contest us. Do some pretty good damage to Baron here. Healing up Shaco. Okay, just trying to distract the Gragas. Moving over here. If he wants to ult me, that's fine. I can just ult in response. So as soon as... uh, Okay, Twitch is way over the wall, which is fine. Ult the Shaco. Heal the clone. Keep it up. All right, and then we go to 44-15 for one final fight here. All right, so Twitch has GA. Now I have Zeke's plus um, Knight's Vow. So this is the Zeke's plus Ardent Sensor. So Twitch is going to go off, and he's got like three or four items right now, so he's just going to like massacre everybody. Okay, I ult. Keep him up. He heals through a lot of it. Okay, they all in him. He's got a GA. I'm holding my ult or my uh, heal for when he comes up. Okay, there's a heal for like half his health. They ult him. As soon as he pops out, I exhaust. So I'm just backing up, healing the Twitch. I don't care about anybody else. Heal him again for like half his health. Put the slow on. Twitch just evaporates everybody. I think just peeling and healing for this Twitch, he ended up going like 16 and 2 this game or something crazy. So yeah, I mean, this is the perfect scenario where this is the the old hyper carry where you just go Ardent Zeke's and then just figure it out from there. I just went um, 
Val plus uh, Nashers too. So give me a little bit of extra tankiness and a little bit of extra protection. The Knight's Vow is still fantastic, even if you only get when I turn uh, when I turn on my ult. I think he only gets six percent damage mitigation instead of twelve, but it's still really good even in that scenario. <clears throat> Okay, so that was pretty strong. So yeah, I mean that's the kind of person that you want to pick Twitch into. Just a hyper carry, you keep them up, they're gonna they're gonna do just a ton of damage. So let's see how I'm trying to remember how Twitch did here. Yeah, yeah, he went fifteen and two. So we were definitely uh, cranking it up there. And then I ended up having uh O three and twenty two, so that was pretty good. Ton of damage. Okay. So that's going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Kale, I think, is very good with hyper carries, even with an AP carry bottom. A good uh, Victor, Cassiopeia, something like that could be a good choice. Um, excuse me. Let me go ahead and just real quickly, I will show you about the members' night. That's what that video was from. If you're interested, I'm going to have a whole video coming out for it soon. But basically, if you'd like a membership, um, it's just $5 a month, no contracts, nothing like that. And everything on the channel is still free. I'm not money walling anything. This is just something that I started last week to reward people who want to support the content on the channel um, in a sustainable way. I accept any and all donations as well, but the membership thing is really cool um, because that allows me to offer a couple of perks. So we get the members Discord, which is uh, very cool. You can get on there, chat with people. Um, get on voice chat. You can set up other games with people. You can have more uh, private conversations if you want to talk about how your day's gone or, you know, just talk about your games for the day with people. Just chill and hang out. You can text people on there. You can share links. You can get on voice chat with people. You can organize games with other members, even when the stream's not online. So it's just a really cool place for members to hang out and have some fun. Um, we have viewers night, which we just saw there. I spent an entire night on Tuesday just hanging out, playing games with viewers, um, with members. So if you want in on that, you just email me, let me know. We can get you in on that. We organize it through the Discord. Uh, there's a vote each week on champions that you want to see me play. So everybody has their favorite champions. People always ask in chat, you know, next game, play Soraka, play Quinn, play Blitzcrank, play Urgot support, all this stuff. And I can't take all those requests during a normal stream because people want to see competitive solo queue play. And I just can't do that. With and just logistically, if I get requests for five different champions, I can't play all five of them at the same time. So I have to figure out a way to fairly do that. And so that's why typically I offer the twenty dollars. I'll play whatever you want on stream on most streams. On viewers night, it's just ten dollars. I'll play whatever you want, and that's for members and non-members. But with members, we do a vote every week, and whichever champion people want to see, then I go through and play it. So I played all of these uh, at some point this week. So I just go through and make sure that I get at least some games. And I'm going to have a separate playlist for voted champions from members here pretty soon. So you will get to see your favorite champion played at some point, probably, during the week. I'll record it as well in case you're not on stream at the time. And I do a lot of them on members' night. Try to get through as many as I can. Um, so you can vote on the champions to make sure your favorite champion is played at least once every week. No matter how obscure they are, I will make sure they get played. And then... Um, if you're into the Warhammer series, you can vote on which episodes will be upcoming. So with the new Warhammer 2 coming out, let's say that you want to really see me play some Dark Elves, you can vote on that. Or you want to see me play High Elves or Skaven or Lizardmen or whatever you want to see, um, you'll get a vote for that. So it just allows you a little bit more say-so in the content on the channel, allows you to participate in the content on the channel with the Members Night, gives you a discount on donation services. So if you want coaching, a guide, whatever, it's just 10% off of that. So it's a lot of great stuff. If you're interested, um, I'll have a link in the description. And then you can just sign up just through PayPal. It's very easy. It just takes like 30 seconds to go. It's right here. You just log in, boom, and you're done. And then you, if you want, if you just really need that money down the line, you're kind of strapped, you can always cancel it, you know, a year in the future or whatever if you want to. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much. Another special thanks to Alice for sponsoring this. I really, really appreciate it. Helps out a lot with that generous donation. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it. Have a good day, and I'll see everybody next time.